Hello everyone, um, my name is Dushan and I'm going to talk about NuGet and MS Word. Uh, so bear in mind that this talk is um, based around .NET framework code base. I know all the cool kids are now using .NET Core, .NET Standard, maybe have already migrated, maybe in the process of migration. Uh, but this talk is mainly about the power of MS Build when you are using .NET Framework projects. Uh, so to show that, we'll jump straight into a demo. Um, I'm just going to start my timer in this meantime. Yeah. Uh, the demo where we'll have a .NET Framework project, and we'll use MS Build to generate a uh, native package. Uh, instead of using, say, NuGet or .NET, uh, um, we'll use MS Build. And using that package, uh, we'll, sorry, we'll use that package as a package reference in another .NET framework project. And during the build process of the second consumer project, the output will be automatically obfuscated. Uh, so for that reason, uh, or to do this thing, we will need a SPK style CS project uh, of a .NET framework project. So we'll just jump straight into Visual Studio. So the thing is, uh, in Visual Studio, by default, it does not give you SDK style CS project for .NET framework projects. So there are two ways you can do it. One is you create your uh, own um, .NET standard project, for example, or a .NET core, and you change the target framework to be .NET framework. That's one way to do it. The other simple way, which that is, uh, I've written this small extension, Visual Studio extension, which you can download and use, and it will add. Uh, .NET Framework SDK style CS project templates. Uh, that's what I've done, and that's how we will start this. So I'm going to create a new project, uh, and this project will just say SDK. I'm going to create a SDK style class library .NET Framework, and we'll say next. And this project is the one which is going to generate that new package. So let's just call it producer to begin with. Let's open the other screen and just drag it across. So there you go. So that's the project. And going into the CS project, if you see, uh, I hope the zoom is good enough. Let me know in case it's not. It's 150. Uh, so if you see, the CS project is as simple as that. And that's all the SDK style CS project brings along. And in this case, say we want to check, like, I'm just quickly show you that actually. Just copy the whole part and go into that. So here, if I just did MS build CS page, which is that CS we just created, you can see that it has generated a DLL file. But say we want to generate a new package. In that case, it's as simple as adding a small property here, which is generate package on build. And once we do that, uh, and we put it in, you will see that it has generated a new package it should be here. There you go. So it, that's all we need to do in a SDK style document driven project, and you already get a new package. If you have worked in, say, old style CS project, then you probably know the pain of having packages to a config file, new spec file, adding references and dependencies to different locations, getting them all right, then you get a uh, new package. So now it's all simple to one CS project, and that works well. To, to do, going back to the demo diagram that I showed earlier, to do this, we will need to ship a targets file with our native package. And uh, I'll show you why is that. So this is Microsoft documentation. And essentially, every part of NuGet package or every folder inside NuGet package means something. There's already a recommended way of uh, having folder structure in there. For example, say libdfm, your TFM, let's zoom in a bit in, in PC. Um, so TFM stands for target framework. So the one that we just created, I'll just go into the output. If you see the new package, I'm using new package explorer to see what's in there. It's lib target framework then a DLL. When it is lib, that um, whenever another Depends on this, 
this becomes the compile time and runtime dependency. So this will be copied to output whenever a second project builds. But in the same time, if you put in the ref target frame of something, that's only compile time. That will not be copied to your output directory or your runtime. Uh, the one that we're interested in is called build. So when we add a uh, targets or props file in a build, uh, and uh, targets are like, um, let's say scripts for MS build. So you can tell MS build to do certain actions or acts, uh, and those can be written in targets. Props are essentially variables which you set for, or properties that you set for your targets to pick up and use. And when we add a targets file inside the build folder, that will automatically be triggered whenever the consuming project triggers it. Uh, so for that, I already have created a targets, so that hopefully will save some time by doing that. So that's the target I'm going to copy across into here. So now if you see, I already have a target here. So this is a simple target. All it does is it looks for a tool called ConfuserX, locates the exe, and then after build, so after the consumer or the dependency has built, it will trigger uh, the ConfuserX exe. And ConfuserX is a uh, it's a simple .NET uh, Office data. Uh, it, it has been archived, but you can do the same logic with any other targets or uh, essential bits that you do using targets. The logic remains the same. So, and like I said, it locates from, like MS build this file directory means location of this targets file. And from there on, it tries to locate where the ConfigureX exe is. And by default, obviously, we'll not have ConfigureX exe. To get that, we can have a package reference. It's as simple as adding one more item group in our project and saying we want ConfigureX final. And that's a new package, which is one So ConfigureX final is a new package provided uh, well, by ConfigureX. And if I just quickly show you what's in there. So ConfigureX package only has a tools folder, which again is a special folder as uh, recommended by Microsoft. Where if you put an XE and its dependencies, then those can be used as a standalone tool, uh, as a .NET tool. So for example, if I did .NET tools install, ConfigureX CLI, ConfigureX final, then that will add this XE to my path. So if in your team you have multiple internal tools you're developing, you can just create new packages and everybody in your team can have access to those by using .NET tools install. Uh, so that has now given us the dependency that we need. But the other thing that we have to do is we need to put this targets file in the build folder that we just uh, discussed in Microsoft documentation. The way to do that is again, another simple items. Uh, item group. I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with item group and property groups. Uh, these are basics of CS portfolio. For this talk, I'm going to skip over those, but feel free to tweet or ask me questions later in case I have to explain something here. Uh, but essentially, what I'm doing here in this item group, I'm saying put this targets file back equals to true means in the native package and package path build. So put it straight in the build for me. That's all I'm saying there. And now that I've done that, if I do MS build again, So I'll just finish the build and go back to the output. You can see that now it has got a build folder with the targets file, and it also has a dependency on computer that's final. Uh, meaning, whoever is using this NuGet package will get this dependency as well as resolved for them automatically using NuGet at all. Uh, the bit that we are looking at now is we still have the producer DLL in there. The thing is, we don't need that. So we can just leave this. And I'm going to show you this. I've deleted it. I've built it. And to show you, it's still there, even after I've deleted. So there is, I believe this is by design of the CS project and how MS Build does its job. But even if we don't want anything that still generates an empty DLL file, the way to get rid of that is we have to again set another small property in our CS code saying, do not give me that. So that's as simple as saying, include build output false. 
and that's it. So that will tell MS Build in Visual Studio, or well, MS Build in this case, that don't include that. Just to confirm that now we don't have that anymore. The other thing about the build is that the name of the target's file has to match the name of the producer, otherwise it won't get treated. And for that reason, we need to do another property saying set the package ID to be this. And now we are ready. So that gives us the package with a new, new name. And like we discussed, all the, like the build has the targets and the dependencies. So now that our um, package is ready, we need to do a consumer, which I have already created. Consumer, which is a simple document framework project. All it does is uh, tries to get the latest version of the dependency that we just created. I'm going to copy the path. In this case, I'm going to add it straight uh, in the new config for that project. But it will essentially be your uh, Microsoft uh, Azure Artifacts location or something like that. And now if I just copy the path, let me go in there. So, the way to do a NuGet restore is slash tree restore. So that does essentially the same as NuGet restore. That has already done the restore for us. I can do it. And if you see that, this is where ConfusorX has triggered. And we can see the output. Then debug net for it. So inside that, a confused folder has been created. I will open that in files file. And like you can see, it has been confused by ConfuserX. And if you open, it's already obfuscated, and you will not see any information in there. So that's a simple way of obfuscating. And the thing is, this package, any other .NET project can just consume and obfuscate out the output by default, uh, as simple as that. Uh, so that was the quick demo. Uh, I'm going to show you quickly the relationship between MSQL and .NET. So in 2016, uh, this is the source code from GitHub. And you can see in 2016, this is .NET. This is source code for .NET build and uh, essentially .NET XE. And you can see NuGet Restore was being used in 2016, but in 2019, MS Build Restore is being used. So this is only the restore bit of our new packages. There are other bits as well, like builds and everything. And you can also see like .NET does trigger MS Build underneath, including you can also do .NET MS Build to trigger a specific target in your CS branch. Uh, going forward, few recommendations. I am running out of time, so I'm going to go quickly through this. Is that whenever possible, try to migrate to SGK Drive CS project. Not only makes it life easier with adding and removing things, it's also very easy to read and understand what's going on there. Uh, and if you have a mixed code base like MS Build, uh, sorry, .NET Framework and um, .NET Core and Standard, then I would recommend MS Build because that's one tool which can do multiple things for you. But if you have already migrated or you're starting fresh and you have only standard and core, then yeah, .NET is the answer. So .NET is the tool that you most probably use. Um, and a bit more extra after that is, ooh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I have a few blog posts on this. I have two blog posts on the same subject. Uh, so feel free to check this, which may clarify some of the things I've gone through quickly or skipped over. And all the demo I've shown is at this location. I'll share this slide later on. I'll, I'll let Dan have it and can put it on his website. The last bit is the extension that I showed at the beginning of the talk is also here, uh, the, the URL there. And that's the end of my talk. And I think just about managed under 15 minutes. Thank you very much, everyone.